Right, anyone with rheumatoid arthritis, gout, even diabetes knows that you can deal with joint pain pretty regularly. And there's another condition that's more common than we may think. It's known as trigger finger, sometimes called trigger thumb. What is it? What can we do about it? So for answers today, we are turning to orthopedic surgeon Dr. Desmond Stutzman with Ortho Neuro. So doctor, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, so I, I had never heard of this um, condition. So tell us exactly, kind of layman's terms out, what is trigger finger? A trigger finger is more of a tendon entrapment. It's a, a mechanical problem where the tendons, as they go through our fingers and reach the very tips of our fingers, they go through the carpal tunnel region, which we've all heard about. Yeah, they also right. go through a second set of tunnels that start right at the level of your, uh, just close to the start of your fingers. And it's a tunnel that basically keeps the tendon close to the bone to give you mechanical advantage in order to flex and extend your fingers. Okay, those basic movements that, right. that we all think about. So, uh, and then it's, it, I was kind of interested, I guess, in wondering if it was happening more to younger kids because of texting, because of maybe, you know, video game use, things have changed technology, but what is the cause of it then? Because you're saying that's not really a case, right? Not really the case. Um, it, we, in fact, there's been several studies to try to look at that. Are we seeing an increase risk of, of trigger fingers because we see all of these devices that we use, game station, phones, but actually we're not seeing that. It still stays at about the fifth decade of life, um, more predominant in women than males, and it really comes with uh, a predisposition almost to, to get these. Patients that get carpal tunnel syndrome, even tennis elbow, they're more likely to get a trigger finger than those patients that don't get those conditions. So is it just age, would you say? Are there other maybe health conditions too that, that add to it? We do think that there are, uh, again, the predisposition, but there are other things. Rheumatoid arthritis, gout, which you talked about, they can lead to an increased incidence of this. The, the going incidence for the normal population is about 2%, 3% in your lifetime. Okay, gotcha. All right, so treatment options. What is the go-to? What's the first step? The first step, obviously, is staying away from those offending agents. So there are things that you can do to actually aggravate a, a trigger finger, and that would be a squeeze ball. I don't, I don't like a squeeze ball. I think those, those really wear on the joints, and that increased activity will cause the tendon to run through that tunnel and aggravate the tendon even more so. So we start with maybe even a basic splint at night for patients that have the trigger finger. A steroid injection is the next line, and that usually is curative in patients that are caught early enough. Mm. And then at the end, if the, the injections don't work and the patients don't wanna go through the injection, a surgical procedure to actually release the tunnel is done. Okay, so that is an option. Obviously, you're looking at other things first to try to avoid that. Correct. All right, doctor, is it possible to prevent this from happening, especially if you have maybe these other medical conditions, if you kind of have a risk for this to happen? Um, not really. Um, <laughs> when we look at this, there are some occupations that we would think would cause this. Uh, occupations where you're really gripping hard with long periods of time. But when we look at the studies across the board, it just seems to be there are factors that are associated and we really feel that it's the predisposition that, that sets you up for this. Okay, and if you ignore it, if you don't treat it, is it just going to continue or, or get worse? It can get worse. It's not so much that this can never be fixed, even if patients have waited a long time. Um, the worst case scenario is that the tendon kind of gets stuck and the finger gets into a position where it can't be moved. Uh. Actually, some patients even come in and have to physically move their finger straight just in order to unlock it, so right. to speak. The surgery corrects that. It, it will correct that. It, there's no long-term damage other than the fact that if you would wait too long, your finger may get stuck in a contracted position and that may take longer to recover from. Yeah, definitely wouldn't be comfortable uh, on a no, daily basis no, for sure. No. All right, so if you do suffer from this condition, We'll say it, pun intended, pull the trigger. Call someone who knows what they're doing, who can look into your situation and figure out what treatment is right for you. It is orthoneuro.com and the phone up on there as well. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having me.